Hey, what up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here tonight, talking a little bit about MMA. Uh, right before this video, I made a video hyping up UFC 189. Uh, Conor McGregor going up against Jose Aldo. Conor McGregor being one of my favorite fighters. I'm really paying attention to that fight and all the shenanigans that is going down around it. But when I'm listening to a lot of the Wrestling Observers and a lot of the other shows out there, basically, um, Quentin Rampage Jackson is in a lot of the news. Of course, Quentin Rampage Jackson, um, he retired uh, from uh, MMA and UFC, um, you know, back in 2012, thinking that his pro fighting career was over after losing to uh, Glover Teixeira on uh, one of the UFC Fox specials. Uh, after that, Bellator got a hold of him. They were sort of picking up a lot of these ex-UFC fighters that still had big name value. Uh, they thought that they could be sort of like the main eventers of their um, company. Uh, they were sort of pushing. Is It's major league, but also it's a little bit scaled back. It's not what UFC is, but it's still, you know, UFC style of fighting, and it's going to be on television on Spike TV. You know, if you bring in these guys, they're, they're the, one of the first pay-per-views that was supposed to be headlining Bellator, I was supposed to be, um, you know, Tito Ortiz going up against Rampage Jackson, which basically fell apart because Tito Ortiz suffered a neck injury on the way to there. They were pushing this as far as to make Tito Ortiz and Rampage Jackson you know, your rivals on uh, TNA Impact, which was a you know a wrestling show. Uh, they were trying to get the most they can get out of you know pushing these guys. They were paying them a lot of money, so they're like, hey, why don't we at least put them on this wrestling show so the wrestling people get involved in this, and then you know the people that are fans of MMA, and then when this actually comes to a pay per view, it's going to big do big numbers you know uh, you know because that fight fell apart his um you know Bellator debut was pushed back a few times and he had a few fights that came along to it but basically uh, he had a fight against King Mo uh, that really didn't go his way if you really watch that fight at Bellator 120 um, you can think of when the fight ended uh, Rampage Jackson was basically giving a congratulatory speech to King Mo basically saying that the fight really didn't go his way and then once they read the scorecards and the fight went in his favor he immediately changed his tone talking about how you know he didn't want to rematch anymore he didn't want to fight King Mo again, and uh, you know he had won the fight uh, due to unanimous decision. But there was not many people that watched that fight that really thought that it was basically, um, you know, his fight. He, they, a lot of people thought that he had lost that fight, and the judges made it, a, you know, a, a decision that was in his favor. Maybe because he was the bigger star. Maybe it was because they just didn't have their glasses on that night. But uh, a lot of things went down after that fight. You know, that, that basically, um, you know, Quentin Rampage Jackson started to say that his um, days in Bellator were over. He wouldn't sign a deal with UFC to go back to them. UFC was sort of at this place where they were, you know, bringing back, you know, their historic big name fighters. Uh, of course, Brock Lesnar was one of the big free agents that they were hoping to bring in after WrestleMania this this year when it's going to be. Um, contract ended uh you know these guys would be a part of pay-per-views their their fights you know really wouldn't matter in the inside of the rankings they wouldn't be going after titles but they definitely could put these you know legends in legends fights that people wanted to see because people wanted to see these guys still fight now when you look at rampage jackson um you know he, he's getting up in age 38 but ufc really thought that they were going to have something for him they even put him on the ufc 186 card uh, you know there was a judge's decision this week basically saying that uh jackson wasn't going to be able to fight for ufc basically his deal with bellator was still intact they hadn't you know um uh voided his contract in any way and him going and signing with ufc was just you know, you're crazy. And now for, you know, Rampage Jackson to go against Bellator, and, you know, at his age, there's still money to be made out there. Um, are they going to be able to repair that relationship? You know, in my mind, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, we all know that Rampage Jackson is a fan of WWE. He's, he was one of the guest hosts of uh, Monday Night Raw during that sort of era when they were bringing in big, uh, big names. And they had the A-team on there, and Rampage Jackson seemed like a guy that really fit in when he was on the show. I, I honestly, in my mind, can't remember what he did. But I do remember that he came off well when he was on the television show. Now, when he was in TNA and he was a part of the main event mafia with uh, Kurt Angle and uh, Sting, uh, Magnus, uh, I can't remember anybody else. It was in the Samoa Joe, I believe, was a part of that group. Um, you know, he didn't really come off that well. They, they put him in some fighting scenarios when he went up against Aces and Eights and he was throwing shots against Wes Briscoe. And Wes Briscoe was making him look like, you know, you know, Rampage Jackson was nothing. He should have been going out there. If he's throwing blows, if he's going blows to blows with anybody inside of that, he should be knocking just about anybody else out. Unless it's Bully Ray, who's like the main event guy of Aces and Eights. If he's hitting 
D. Vaughn, if he's hitting uh, Wes Briscoe, if he's hitting Eric Bischoff's son, Garrett Bischoff, they should all be falling down on the ground. I think that honestly, if his MMA days are done, if you look at how old Rampage Jackson is, I believe he's 38 years old. I don't know why WWE doesn't really look at this guy. I know he's 38. I know that their style of doing things with, with uh, you know, pe people bringing him into the business is sending him down to NXT and, you know, putting them through developmental and making them a good wrestler. Quentin Jackson has a big match written all over him. You've already got this guy, Brock Lesnar, and you've suspended him for beating up people on... Uh, Monday Night Raw because he's pissed that he lost his championship and Seth Rollins ran out of him. I know that at SummerSlam, you're going to have to make up some sort of a wild story. Maybe if, uh, you know, Paul Heyman really did go down and file this lawsuit and Brock Lesnar comes out, comes back as a baby face and the authority has to reinstate him due to his contract and, um, you know, all is forgiven for what happened on Monday Night Raw and he's going to get his title shot. But as of right now, it doesn't really have any way that makes sense. It's almost like every time Brock Lesnar needs to go away, they've either had him quit, they've either had him, you know, leave the business and retire, um, saying that he's done everything he needs to do and there's nothing else to do. They've suspended him. It just disbands belief that there's anything going on. Uh, honestly, the one time that it really made sense that he left is when he left for the championship for Night of Champions after beating John Cena for the second time, just basically bailing out because, you know, he, he almost lost to John Cena. Seth Rollins almost cashed in on him, and he's like, fuck this. I'm the champ. I'm bailing out of here. I'm getting out of there. If I'm WWE, I'm getting Rampage Jackson on the phone right now. He can't go to UFC. He's already got bad blood with Bellator. How is he going to be able to repair that? I want to know if I can get him to come to NXT you know, not be a part of the wrestling show, but, you know, be a part of the performance center. Try to get this guy up to standards. I mean, we've seen big matches out of Lawrence Taylor. We've seen big matches out of, um, you know, other celebrities uh, that, that have come down the turnpike that you know, pumped out one good match. You know, they signed Ken Shamrock from UFC when UFC was going down the toilet in its early days, and they made him one of the best intercontinental champions of all time. I can remember one of my favorite moments from Monday Night Raw was watching Ken Shamrock and they said that he was going to fight Stone Cold Steve Austin at the time. Stone Cold Steve Austin was one of the, uh, the the baddest men in a wrestling ring. But he's going up against Ken Shamrock? That title's changing hands. Shamrock's going to be that. That was one of the first times and the last times that I was actually calling people, making sure that they were watching Monday Night Raw, because that was one hell of a main event. And I don't remember how they got out of it, if it was a disqualification or whatnot. But when I heard Shamrock was going up against Austin on Raw, that was guaranteed, I gotta see this. Could Rampage Jackson be brought in as a monster heel, as a part of the authority? You know, Brock Lesnar has turned babyface, he's no longer with them anymore. Um, he, he's sort of that wild gun with Paul Heyman, he's gonna be going after Seth Rollins. Could he be brought in as sort of like the diesel to Shawn Michaels for Seth Rollins? Could he be that, you know, sort of backup insurance plan, that uh, bodyguard role in the background. I think that it might cost a lot of money for WWE to bring in a guy like Rampage Jackson for a short little run, especially knowing that he's not going to be going over in the long run. But Rampage Jackson versus Brock Lesnar might not ever happen in MMA octagon ever again. Brock has said that his fighting days are over. But happening inside of a WWE ring makes a lot of sense, makes a lot of money, and I don't see why they're not on the phone right now. If, I, if I'm then, I'm trading phone calls, and it makes a lot of sense to me.